Good evening. This is CTV News for Wednesday, October 5th. I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Patricia Vallone. Glad to have you with us tonight. Well, the local NAACP rallies against foreclosures in Prince George's County. About a dozen people protested against predatory lending, modified terms and conditions, and questionable closing practices. 6,000 properties that are in foreclosure. And we're looking to uh, find a way, one, possibly get a, a, a moratorium, two, to have the judges and the court look at the cases when they come and so people can get their day, get their day in court. We know that there is something wrong. Elizabeth Warren knows it, Bernie Sanders knows it, politicians know it. But you know, no one is talking about, no one is talking about foreclosures anymore. They're, they've swept it under the rug. Yet here in Prince George's County alone, there are 6,000 people in the queue, 6,000 in the queue waiting to be foreclosed on. Investors are coming in, they're knocking on people's doors, trying to make them leave early. It's just a real sin. Now that rally was held outside of the county courthouse in Upper Marlboro. The vice presidential candidates went head to head last night. Both are being praised for their mastery of policy. However, Republican Mike Pence has been criticized for not defending Donald Trump more against Tim Kaine's attacks. And Kaine, Hillary Clinton's Democratic running mate, some believe interrupted the debate too much and was too aggressive. They discussed a variety of issues, including the military and immigration. Take a listen to some of the back and forth from last night. Uh, to use a broad brush to accuse law enforcement of, uh, of implicit bias or institutional racism. And, and that really has got to stop. Donald Trump during his campaign has called Mexicans rapists and criminals. He's called women slobs, pigs, dogs, disgusting. If you want to have a society where people are respected and respect laws, you can't have somebody at the top who demeans every group that he talks about. There are two more presidential debates, one on October 9th and the other one on the 19th. After a devastating flash flood hit Ellicott City in uh, July, now officials announced the historic district is about to reopen. On Thursday at 5 p.m., pedestrian and vehicle traffic will once again be able to travel into the entire downtown area. However, officials say the district is still an active construction zone, so access to portions of sidewalks will be restricted at times for repair work, and there is no public parking. A federal grand jury indicts scores of defendants in two separate indictments. Of the 80 people named, more than a dozen are corrections officers, 35 inmates. The remaining 27 are on the outside. According to federal officials, the defendants were involved in a racketeering conspiracy at Eastern Correctional Institution in Westover, Maryland. The ring allegedly paid bribes to corrections officers to smuggle in contraband, narcotics, tobacco, and cell phones into the prison. Each defendant could face up to 20 years behind bars. A Silver Spring man will spend the next 12 years in prison for throwing Molotov cocktails at a home in Upper Marlboro. Back on October 14, 2014, 35-year-old Damien Body filled up beer bottles with gasoline at a service station, then drove to a home, set the bottles on fire, and threw them at the residence. According to the plea agreement, Body knew the homeowner and in previous years had set the victim's car on fire and even threatened to kill the victim. You are watching CTV News. I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Patricia Vallone.